What's up, everybody? What's going on? This is D with DNC Digital, episode two of DNC Radio. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, listening to the last one with Jolene Anderson. If you have it, just go on the uh, DNC Radio playlist on my YouTube, DNC Digital, and you can catch it. Uh, DNC Radio is going to be uh, like a podcast type of thing. I'm going to be uh, talking to people from around the country, around the world, uh, all different types of life. So if you got anybody you think um, that would be a good interview or you would like the support for them, just uh, send me an email. Or follow me on Instagram at DNC Digital or on Twitter at DNC Digital. Today I got an old buddy, and I, if I do the math correctly, I've known the guy 18 years. Uh, so all you little little brats in high school, I've known this guy longer than you've been alive. Um, real good friend, and now he has his own business, and he's uh, moving on up in the uh, CrossFit world. Uh, from Brooklyn, New York, but uh, now residing in Elizabeth, New Jersey, Reef Warfield. What's going on, buddy? What's up, man? How you been, man? How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Yo, you said 18 years, yo. Wow. We've been friends forever. <laughs> People and everything. Well, actually, I just finished my uh, my lifting session, uh, my last lifting session. I probably didn't do that well today, so I'm pretty beat up, but I'm all right, you know. Try to enjoy every lifting day as it comes and goes. Uh, you got Thanksgiving coming up in a few days. What what do you got planned? Uh, Thanksgiving isn't the same as it used to be for me ever since I uh, was doing fitness. Uh, I tell you, last year I had Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes mostly on my plate. So this year it's probably going to be very, very similar. Um, I try to do it just because I'm training so much that a time like Thanksgiving, yeah, you know, a lot of people indulge in food eating and eating in food, but I don't. Yes, I bro, yes. You should reward yourself. Well, yeah, and I do, but, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather that come with some, some pizza. So, it's really no pizza on Thanksgiving. But <laughs> Yeah, so that, a lot of people have been talking about pizza. Not to stray away from the interview, but what it is it, what is it about pizza? A lot of, a lot of fitness people are saying it's, that pizza is like the best thing to eat. Yeah, because, I mean, it's, well, to me, in my personal opinion, it, it's not heavy on my sit, you know, on my stomach. Um, I feel like it fills me up. It's comfort food at the same time. Um, it fills me up, uh, and I enjoy it. I mean, that's one thing I guess. Out of all the foods, if they had to, you know, tell you what's bad, that's one of the ones that are is not that bad. I guess depending on how much of it you eat, and you know. But a slice here and there isn't too bad. You know, try not to have too much grease, I guess. Oh, but I don't know. I, I mean, I just I just enjoy it. For me, it's just comfort food, man, honestly. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. You're originally from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, you got a ton of brothers, I know. You got Sal, you got Beta, and uh, what, yeah. what else you got? Yeah, and Tony. So I got three older brothers. Um, one of them, right, well, Sal is the one that's in the fitness with me. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, the other two, they, you know, they're in Ohio, they're older men, you know, with family, so they're doing all it's right. Interesting, uh, interesting, uh, fact about Sal, he was, uh, DJ Strike for, uh. Oh, he's still DJ Strike, yeah, he's still oh, DJ yeah, Strike. Oh, yeah, he is, yeah. Right. He, he DJs from, from, you know, a lot of people might not know this, but Dress from Black Sheep. Right. Um, he still DJs for him, and he also DJed with, um, De La Soul for a little bit, uh, as their, like, backup DJ, um, but... Other than that, yeah, he's toured, man. He's toured around the world and stuff like that. So he's he's made a name for himself, you know, with that. Shout out to DJ Strike. Make sure you guys follow him. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, so Brooklyn, New York, uh, where did you live? I mean, this is something even in the 18 years that I've known you. that We, we haven't even talked about your life in New York. What, what was it like growing up? Where did you grow up? What part of New York? Oh, uh, man. Uh, Crown Heights, Crown Heights, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, to me, it's probably... A big stamp of who I am and, you know, how I, I am the man I am today. Um, Brooklyn will always be a big part of me. I lived there for about a good, I want to say, I hate, I, when I say this, I always say it wrong, but maybe about a good 13, 13 years. Uh, then I ended up moving to Elizabeth, New Jersey with my mom. Um, right. but Brooklyn was great, man. I mean, Brooklyn, I think built me. To the point where I didn't have somebody at a younger age to teach me how to play a lot of sports. So mm-hmm. I learned just from playing on the block with friends and, you know, and just doing it that way. So I learned selfly, you know, self-taught. And I guess it 
character it just carried on till now you know till all the way so brooklyn just shaped me honestly it's crazy how you know you, you're living in it and you don't realize how it's going to stay with you i mean i can right. i can relate I, I had my older brother with me and we'd be on prospect street in elizabeth new jersey and you know he'd say go to the chevy and get a quick left while we're playing football, you know, right, like, right, right, right. or uh, two completions is the first down and that telephone pole is touchdown. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you yep. know, you, you, uh, you, you nail the milk crate to the telephone pole for the basketball. <laughs> yep. You remember and, that it, and it just shows, yeah, yeah and, it, and it just shows how resourceful you're going to be. And not only that, but you, you do with what you got, you yeah. know, like, no matter what, like, we didn't have like a fancy yard or, but we, we, we played football. And then, you know, what do you do when somebody says car? Everybody knows to just go to the sidewalk. You know? yep. That's just timeout. That's a quick timeout. That's all that is. Quick timeout. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, I can, I can relate. Um, you know, being where you're from obviously, uh, wires you mentally. So okay. what did that do for you in your adult life? Well, uh, I, I always have to say that as far as, being able to like kind of never feel like you couldn't figure it out um believe them believe in the impossible i always said that i said i think brooklyn really taught me that that no matter what no matter how hard things got or how impossible things may seem there's always a way uh so i mean building me as far as strength mentally that's what it did for me physically i mean i was just a kid you know it was just being able to run around and then do as much as I could when I could. Like you said, we didn't have much. So I didn't get to a chance to really play outside much. I was in, in the building. I was in, I lived in buildings at that time. So the hallway was my park. You know, um, mm-hmm. me and my mother was talking about it. Me and my mother was talking about it the other day that I was probably maybe like six, maybe six years old, right? And we lived on the fourth floor of a building. Now I had to play in the hallway. My mom, wouldn't sit in the hallway and watch me play with my friends and stuff like that. You know, that all the parents would be in there in the house, in an apartment, and the kids would just be in the hallway. The scariest thing was not having a parent watching you. There's, there's stairs, like there's some, like pretty much cement stairs going down flights. So a kid could have easily fell down them steps, you know, and throughout the, all them years, that never happened. So it was just, it's, it's almost building that, that time of like, I'm by myself. You know what I'm saying? At a young age, I'm still by myself and I still got to act right. And you grow up fast. You know, it's like little things like that. You do grow up fast. And I, I've realized that about kids from New York, period. You know, that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they actually learn a little bit faster than most. And that's just my opinion, you know. So. Well, I mean, any, anywhere where it's tough. And, yeah, um, that's true. That's I, true. I, can, I, can, I can feel the same way. And, I mean, I remember uh, I was managing some kid. Uh, I, I used to manage at a restaurant, and um, mm-hmm. this kid, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, he uh, he was something was affecting his performance. He wasn't he wasn't bringing it like he usually mm-hmm. does. So I brought him in the office. And I was like, "What's going on, man?" He goes, "Dude, the flood, man! It took it took away my house." And I was like, "Shit, wow. you know, like we had we had a flood here, and it took away his entire house." And you know, after I pat him on the back, I told him everything was gonna be all right. Like I'm like, "Look, I get it, I get it. Right now, it's shitty, but..." I need you to I need you to 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 come to work because there's there's a difference between going to work and going to work. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. right so, right. Uh, and he just looks at me. He's like, "Man, I just wish it was easy." And I was like, "You know what? I don't wish that for you." And then he looked at me like I was an asshole. I was like, "You want to have your hand out? Like, you want to have your hand out and just ask for stuff?" And then then things just get put in your hand, and you get fed, and you get fed, and you get fed, and you never learn how to hunt. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. That and I was true. like, I was telling them, I was like, I know you're going to be okay. I know I can tell that you're going to take care of yourself if anything happens. God forbid. I was like, I told them, I'm like, you don't want the mountain to be moved. You want the strength to get over that mountain. Word. You know what I mean? Good. And, and, uh, yeah. no, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, you know, dude, I got to, tra- I got to trademark that, that quote. But, um, <laughs> right. I'm about to but say yeah, that. like me and you, we grew up in the not prettiest parts of our right. home states. So, so what happened when you moved over to Elizabeth? Did you did, did you not like the move? Did you did you say no? I want to stay in Brooklyn, or did you embrace the change? I think any time you go away from something that you're so used to, you don't like it at the beginning. So, of course, I was um wasn't you know I didn't buy into it right away. Um, I was still traveling back and forth from New Jersey, going back to New York, because it's, it's just pretty much a train ride. You know, you can make it back to New York in 30 minutes. 
So mm-hmm. I was always going back out there just to hang out with friends. And at that time, um, I was into sports. I was really big into sports. So I was um, doing uh, basketball, football, and bowling. So the basketball and the football part really stayed with me in New York more than it moved with me to um, to New Jersey. So it took maybe a good year or two for me to really adapt. And then as I went to high school, I started to see myself kind of like unwinding and getting used to it. Uh, so that's probably when I started to really appreciate the move. But I did, it took maybe a good two years to really appreciate it, too, truthfully. You know, but it was, it was different. It definitely was different. Oh no, definitely, definitely is different. Um, so you were in sports as you as as a kid. Yeah. And uh, yeah. what was um, <clears throat> and I'm sure your your mom's like your biggest fan, and I lo- I love that about her. Yeah, I yeah. miss your mom. Shout out to your mom, by the way. Yeah. Um. Man. So uh, how big of a support system is she, and how important is she in in your success? Um. Right now, she. I mean, she's a huge part of everything. Um. Since since I was young, she's the one that pretty much dialed it into me that you can't start something and not finish. Um, I'll tell you a quick little story. I started with bowling and um, I started bowling around the age of eight. So that was the first sport that I actually got into. Uh, and going through that, it was just like, it was fun at first. Uh, but then I started to get in a lot more in tune with it. And I started going against guys older than me and stuff like that. So losing a lot happened. <laughs> um, I won, I won, but a losing a lot happened at that first beginning. So I didn't really enjoy it too much. I didn't really like it, but I was good at it. So that's what kept me going, knowing that I was all right at it. And I remember throughout all the years, it was probably maybe like seven years later, I remember I wanted to quit. I just wanted to quit bowling. I didn't want to bowl anymore. At this time, I'm in high school, and I was on a bowling team for high school, and she told me, you can't quit. She said, you've been doing it this long. You might as well finish it out. And what she meant by finishing out was do it for the rest of the remainder of my high school, you know, high school. So do it for the last four years. And then once I'm done with high school, if I don't want to do it no more, I don't have to. And mm-hmm. I did. I stuck with it. Even though I didn't like it, I stuck with it. So that's one thing that she always taught me. So when it came down to bowling, basketball, football, and now today with uh, functional fitness, CrossFit, she had, I'm at the point where. I started it. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to see this through. Uh, it gets hard, but she's definitely the one that reminds me of that all the time as well as I'm going through it. So support system, she's huge. I mean, I couldn't ask for any anything else or anything more. She couldn't. She doesn't have to give me more at this point. She is doing exactly what she is good at, and that's just supporting me. I mean, she's been to every single game that I pos- probably had in my life. You know, so she's always been there, which I I really appreciate. I mean, I I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. So you moved out here um, to Elizabeth when you were about mm-hmm. thirteen, fourteen, I guess. You said yeah, you moved around, out there around that time. Yeah, around that time. Yeah. Um. So tell me what 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 was it like in high school? Good old EHS Elizabeth High School. Shout out to Elizabeth High School. Elizabeth um, High. School. Wow. Yeah. Damn it, man! I have missed that place, but um. That was, uh, that was uh, you, you got into the team, right? You got into the football team? Yeah, I was playing football for high school. I played football for the three years, um, not my freshman year, but every year after that until my senior year, I got hurt. Um, that came from playing basketball and football. Uh, but I wasn't playing basketball for the high school. I was actually playing basketball uh, in, in leagues and AAU leagues and stuff like that with friends still from Brooklyn. Uh, that's, that part never stopped there. But other than that, football was something I did in high school. Bowling was something I did in high school. So go, coming to here, I guess it opened me up more sports wise and my athletic life. Um, mm-hmm. sorry, that's a timer for me. But, um, it was, a, it opened me up more that I started to realize I'm, I'm, I am an athlete. Uh, when I was playing in right. Brooklyn, I was, I was just young at that time where I didn't have much guidance. It was just, me joining teams and doing, you know, things with friends. Yeah, right? let's just play. Let's just play. Right. Let's just play, right. And when I got here, it was more of, okay, you, you're going to have practice and you're going to have um, all these things where I wasn't, it wasn't uncommon to me, but it wasn't so strict at the, you know, it wasn't like a, a the chore. The work that was that involved. Point. Right. So now that's what I'm learning. And then, um, and I mean, New Jersey definitely put that on me. You know, I, I felt more 
as an athlete growing up, which was really cool. So no. you, you spent half of your life in both states. One thing I want to, I'd like to know is that a lot of people outside the tri-state area always uh, use us as parallels, that we're no different. You know, uh, I was born and raised in Jersey. You were raised in Brooklyn. Now you live in Jersey. Is right. there a difference between the hustle between two people of different states? <sighs> the hustle. I wouldn't say so much. I would say that they, man, it, that's a good question. The hustle is pretty much the same in, in a way. Uh-huh. Um, New York, you just feel it more. I guess because the whole hustle is, you know, like, yeah, yeah. it's just faster paced there. I mean, everything is nonstop. Everything, I mean, you have the, and what it is, is just such a big, big city that you have, People always moving. It's, it's like uh-huh. at no matter what time, somebody's outside moving. And when I moved to New Jersey, I actually got to feel that quietness at night. I actually understood that difference. But wake oh, up in the morning. Five o'clock hits, hustle, they punch in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like the hustle's still there. It's like grind, 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 grind. And the one thing I will say about um, New Jersey is that don't, don't underlook New Jersey. I mean... When I got here, I was like, wow, the amount of just athletes or the amount of just people that can actually become something was high. Like the, the percentage was a high percentage. I was amongst people that actually had talent. And every, I mean, I remember this one kid that we went to high school with, cool, one of the coolest dudes, but yo, he could sing and play the guitar better than, I mean, artists that was out, you know, and I, I can't remember. Who was remember that? Who was that? I can't remember. Oh, his name. remember his name. Oh, yeah, okay. but he was he went to high school with us and he I mean he was awesome to the point where I was like, wow, like I don't I remember guys yeah, in Brooklyn being able to rap, but everybody could rap. Did he have did he have an afro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, was yeah. it was it Keith or Kevin? Ke- yeah, there, there you go. It was one of them. I think it was Keith. From public speaking, right? We had public yeah. speaking with him. Yeah, yeah. He was a dope kid. He's, man. He's, oh, you know man. what? He's saying water runs dry. He had the girls crying, bro. See? Now, look, I wish yeah. I could sing that, but I was from Brooklyn. I ain't had no guitar, no singing lessons like that. <laughs> yeah, you had some Tims. You had some <laughs> Tims and blue jeans. That's all you had. Yeah, word up. I ain't know nobody from Brooklyn that knew how to play guitar. So that wasn't in our, <laughs> that wasn't in our category. You know what I'm saying? That was from Jersey. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, I definitely give a lot of credit to Jersey as far as that goes, man. Um. So uh, when, I, when I met you, uh, mm-hmm. I, I guess I'd like to thank the fact that we both failed math. Because uh, really? because we had integrated math together, and that's where I met you. Um, I, I know I seen you around the high school, but then I, I I honestly don't know what our first conversation was. I don't know how we became friends. I don't. Um, yeah, me neither. But I, I knew you you yeah. were no, I, I can't man. It's it's way too far back. But um, I knew you were into basketball, mm-hmm. and it was it's it, it it was just such a huge part of your life. Right. Um, tell me tell me tell me why. Tell me uh, how you grew up in it, and what uh, made you so like into it, and that it was just, it was just it was part of you. Like if when I thought of you, I thought basketball. Tell me why. Yeah, so I, at that time, um, it was prob I was I was young and fourth grade. I can remember that grade. Uh, I remember not having not only doing bowling at the time, so I didn't have basketball in my life at all. And I met this kid in Brooklyn um, by the name of Pat. And he pretty much was this taller kid in class. You know, he was tall. He could jump. He could play ball. He could do it all. And me and him got real close. And he was the basketball player. So I kind of followed suit with him and playing basketball. So he taught me a little bit. Um, He was always at the court, at the park playing. So I kind of just stuck around him and ended up picking up the sport. And then for our friendship, it stuck. I mean, me and him became best friends. I mean, that's like. We was joining at the hip and all the way through high school, man, meeting you. That was the reason why, because me and him were still playing on teams together. I mean, he would travel to Jersey, play on a team with me in Jersey. I'll travel to New York, play on a team with him in New York. And we did that every year. And I mean, we did it every year from from the time of like, I'll say fifth grade all the way through high school to senior year. We were on the same basketball team. And that was a big part because I had somebody to take that experience with me. And I guess that's where my love for basketball just stayed, man. I never, I, I mean, that was, that's still a sport today that I, I enjoy even just watching it. 
you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, your your first tattoo was was you holding a ball and and the net, right? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, it was supposed to be me, but it ain't. It's supposed it was, to be you. I yeah, mean, it was, it was from behind. You know? Your skin is already black, so they didn't have to. They didn't yeah. have to color it. Yeah, and, but I, the guy don't have fingers, so uh, yeah. You know, he was, he, was I mean, he was holding the ball. It was, it was from a different perspective. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it was just one of them first tattoo looks. But no, nah, yeah, definitely. When I went and went to go look for my first tattoo, it wasn't like oh, I want to get my name or anything like that. Like most people's first tattoos, it was I want to get basketball, something that resembled basketball, and that was it. You know, I was just it resembled it. Right? It just maybe wasn't it all the way. You know? Yeah, you ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, it definitely was. It definitely showed how much I loved it. You know, once people said, "Oh, you got a basketball guy on your arm," I was like, "Yeah, because I play basketball." So, uh, um, one thing, one yeah. thing I knew about you is that you were just, uh, you were always positive. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever seen you upset. Now that I think of it, you've always been a positive. Dude. We used to take trips, we used to take day trips to New York. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And, I know. Um, <laughs> I remember another thing about you being positive. Uh, positive is that it's it's an attracting thing to the opposite sex. Now, the reason I say that is because you had an ex-girl. Well, she was your ex-girlfriend already. Uh-huh. We were at the movies. We were watching Bad Boys 2. <laughs> okay. And, and well, that girl was sitting. That, no, I remember all this. Look, that girl I, I, was sitting. I don't even remember this, but I want to hear this. Go ahead. Go ahead. I remember. Go ahead. That, that, that girl was sitting at the 2 o'clock position from us. I'm not going to say her name because she okay, may be listening. Okay. Lord knows I have a larger audience. Yep. So, <laughs> so uh, I was like, "Hey, I was like, check it out. Look who that is." He's like, and then uh, you go, "Oh man," and then you just say, <laughs> "You th- you thought I forgot about it?" You just say, "Yo, you should just scream." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "I dare you to scream to just to be stupid." You're you're a silly guy, right? I'm like, "You dumb. You think I'm dumb as hell? You want me to scream so that she can look and then see you there? Like, oh my God, Reef, look! Oh my God, let's go have sex." <laughs> it was like your you was like your slick ass way of trying to get some using your buddy to like trying to dare me like I'm gonna no this ain't no jackass YouTube shit. Oh, man, man, I got a, I got a ton of stories, <laughs> man. We we Dan, there was one summer where we spent like every day together. We used to go to Seaside Heights all the time, yeah, man. Yeah, all the time. It was man. it was uh it was me and the always, crew and uh I always said enjoy life, man, that's all. Yeah, man, it was it was it was a it was always a fun time, and the, the best thing about uh, our friendship is that I, I could just call you. It's like nothing ever happens. It's like I could not speak to you for six months, and it's like, hey, how you been? Um, so now, after high school, um, let's let's talk, you know what I want to talk about? Let's talk about Reefs World TV. Oh wow, okay, yeah, yeah. that was a fun time. After, after high school, we still hung out, and then uh, I ended up moving out here to Texas. Now, then you started, um, you can go, you can take it from here. You started streaming music on a certain channel, right? Yeah, I started doing it on, cause, um, at that time, that's when, um, internet blogging, uh, was really, really popular. So blog TV and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Ustream was a big, big thing then. So, um, since Sal, since DJ Strike, Sal was, my brother was into, uh, music, I kind of figured a way to uh incorporate us as far as doing internet radio and we had um we had a good act we had an artist uh we had you doing comedy radio and then we had me and um and dennis doing um just music like playing. a morning show radio yeah like yeah just playing morning radio and just talking to people and stuff like that just kind of having like a morning show so we started doing that, and we called it Reese World TV. And I guess the reason why we did that is because it was my idea. Um, right. But I started to see that it was blossoming into so much more than myself. It was, man. It really, you know it saying? really it was, was. I mean, it was. It was so awesome. Uh, the reason, why, I mean, the reason why it stopped is just because I guess people's lives started to interfere, and it became hard to manage, especially mm-hmm. at a young age. We were at a young age and we were doing this. We really started doing this all just for fun. And then I guess when things happen, when they're right, yeah, you could do it for fun, but then it turns into a job. It, it turns into a job and then there, there's some, there's some work to put into that. Yeah, there's like work. And I think that's what we got overwhelmed with was the, the part that we weren't really looking to work too hard. And then, and we were young, we were having fun with it. So part of me, you know, I really wish that we could have gotten to the point where 
it was stable and we got it we kept running with it but i mean i understand why you know what i'm saying and i'm not upset about it I'm, i i love the fact that we did that we took that no no I, I think we had a great run and i always look back at that time with with like with a smile on my face because the way the way it happened the way i like to tell people is that you were doing you were doing your streaming right and it turned into your show with dennis it was like a morning zoo show it was like right. one of those uh, the, those morning shows that you listen to when you're on your way to work and then yep. you were working with your artist and um it, it 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 was there. It was right there. Right. And then at right. the time, I was doing MySpace blogs. Remember those shits? Yeah, so, man, uh, MySpace. That was the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was doing MySpace blogs, and they were they were they were getting some traffic. And then you told me you're like, hey, why don't you just get ten minutes on my show and just do your jokes? I was like, all right, I can right. do that. By the way, DNC Digital, the DNC for for first time listeners, for my for my uh, day one fans, they already know what it is. But the, yep. you know, new listeners now. It was D's Nuts Comedy. That was the name <laughs> of my, my, I don't know why I did it, but it was just too easy to name it that, you know what I mean? So, uh, D's Nuts, yeah, D's Nuts Comedy on MySpace blogs. I, you can probably still look them up. So, um, those 10 minutes became, um, became popular. Yeah. And then, then after that, you were like, yo, do your own show. I was like, oh, I, I don't know about all that. So then, um, it just developed into these nuts radio. And then we'd have a guest on every week, which was awesome. We'd uh, interview them and, uh, and um, just help them promote whatever they had. And we had, yeah. remember we had those ghost hunters that one time. Oh man, That was awesome. That was awesome. That was a great one. That's then we awesome. had a, uh, we had a guy who was in and out of prison the past 10 years. We had prison Omar X. Figueroa. Yeah. 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 Uh, inmate X, because inmate I didn't want to say him. I didn't, I didn't want to yeah. say his name. So I said inmate X. And um, it was right there where I developed the passion of uh, interviewing, and um, like, like like just like you said, you know, like we we all grew up. We were like twenty one, twenty two, and we yeah. were we were we had this team going. We had yeah. this, we had a brand, and we had we had this thing going. And um, it was just always a great. It was always so much fun to do. And I always look back, and I knew then that you would be okay because it was just after high school, and I, I always knew you was a sports guy, you know. But I knew then that you can manage a team, you can manage uh, uh, something that you were going to put forward for people to respond to, you know? That's awesome. And, um, and so after that, how did, you, how did you find CrossFit? Because we had this conversation that we'll touch on a little later on, but we had this conversation the other day about mm -hmm. how we just fell into what we're doing now. So tell me how you found CrossFit. Well, this was around the time after Pro TV. Um, I was working at a job and it was, uh, flooring. I was selling flooring tiles and stuff like that. And it was cool. And it was for this guy. He, um, he owned it himself. It was a small little business and he just had a showroom and we worked in the showroom. And I, I had, I admired how he would, he told me he had a bar before that. And then he opened up this flooring thing and he just, it was just something that he had no idea of what he was doing. He was just doing it and it worked for him for a while. And he wasn't sure if this was something that he was going to continue to do, but he said, you know what? This is something that it's working for me. I caught, I caught a passion for it. So he ran with it. Now, after that, he had to let me go because, like I said, it was a small business and he just couldn't pay me. So after that, I kind of lost sight of what to do with myself and I started working out. I think everybody at some point just says, you know what, I'm going to work out and try to be, you know, in shape. And at this point, I think I was like maybe 26. So... A couple of me and a couple of my friends, we all just decided to work out and get in shape. And um, and we started with like P90X. Uh, we started with like resistant bands. It wasn't nothing serious. Just doing those little videos and stuff like that. And I did start to see results in a positive way. I started I started to see my body changing. I started to see I'm um I was really getting in tune with being healthy. I always was working out. Like it was getting to the point where that athlete side of me started to come out again. And I kind of lost it because I stopped playing ball and all that stuff so much. So just working out. Now, that good friend, Pat, that I told you about that got me into playing basketball, he had moved uh, overseas to Norway. And he was playing basketball in Norway for a while. And, I mean, this kid wasn't – he wasn't big or anything, like muscular or anything like that. He was pretty much like a toothpick, a tall toothpick when he left. So when he came back home for a couple months – I, you know, finally saw him. We only talked on the phone, so I wasn't able to really see him. But when we saw him, he was all muscular and cut up. And I was like, man, your basketball's doing you real good. He was like, nah, they got me on this thing called CrossFit out there. 
So he started explaining it to me, and it sounded crazy. It sounded like something that I definitely did not want to do. You know, I was like, you know, I'm good nice. with P90X. You know, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm good. So I, um, I started to just continue to do what I was doing, but I kept seeing results on him. I mean, it was like amazing results that he was getting compared to what I was doing. So one day I kind of tested it out a little bit, and I tried one of the workouts, and it beat me up. And after uh-huh. that workout, after that workout, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna add this to my regimen a little bit. So me and my couple of my friends started doing a little bit of it. And we had, it was at my boy's garage. So he had a really huge garage and it wasn't like finished or anything like that. It was just a couple of weights in there, a car, you know, a couple of things, but we had enough room to work out. And the way that, um, so that's how CrossFit really got introduced to me. It was by Pat again. And after those first couple workouts, I ended up going to a, a morning class that I found a group on thing for. So I was going at five o'clock in the morning to these, to these CrossFit classes to do the beginning courses. And I mean, when I tell you I would do the beginning course and it would leave me beat up, but wanting to do it more, I knew this was something that was perfect for me. So that's kind of how I got started with uh with that, with functional fitness and CrossFit. It was just experience. So, um, so you started doing it. You started seeing results. What made you say, I want to help other people? Now, that happened before, like around the same time of me, even before I went to the class. Around the same time, my um, one of my best friends, he had a sister that was looking for help in as, as regarding to working out. He was trying to help her, but she wouldn't listen to him. So he was um, he was like, "Yo, man, she might listen to you. Uh, you know, you 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 know you know what you're doing. We me me, me and him both were doing P90X. So it's not like I had a whole bunch of knowledge over him or anything like that. But I said, "All right, I'll help her. I don't mind helping her. You know, it's your sister." So I ended up helping her, and then. It became a thing where we built a schedule where I was going to go to her house every other day and train her for an hour. And that also had me going through different type of workouts, learning how to, you know, really train someone. Um, So I'm doing research. I'm getting books. I'm doing all the things I needed to do to just help this one girl, you know, reach her goals. And I'm doing it in a way where I wasn't tr- I wasn't really trying to just put on a video and have her do P90X or anything like that. I wouldn't wanted to help her. So I kind of just took a couple workouts, ran them, wrote them down and went to her and had her do some things. I would have her just, and it was mostly in a bodybuilding type of way, but little by little with, with me going to the CrossFit class and stuff like that, I started to take those movements and those things and incorporate into her working out. And she really, really did enjoy it. So what, what do you think it is? What do you think it is about your, your uh technique or your approach to working out or training people that people respond to what 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 makes them go to you instead of the other guy on the other facebook or instagram page you know i i always i always wondered that and um a, a couple of people actually told me why one is because i am not the type of guy to like i will i can be really hard at times but understanding the person is what i try to do first i don't try to put you in a place where your expectations, like I like, oh, I expect you to do this. Or I expect you to do that. And, oh, you coming to me. So this is expected from you. I don't put that on the person right away. I really do try to understand where they're at. And we work through that first. Everybody's uh-huh. not, everybody doesn't look at fitness to me as they should. To me, when you look at fitness and you're doing something, Consider yourself an athlete. I don't care what level you're on. You are an athlete because you're doing something outside of your ordinary stuff. You know, like you're going to be running. You're going to be jumping. You're going to be doing all these things that are going to get your heart rate up and you're going to perform where on a regular day, getting up out of your bed and walking to your kitchen, you're not thinking about performing. But if we get you to the point where when you get out of bed and you start moving in a way of like with intent and with purpose, it's because that's the athletic mind to me. And I honestly don't know anything else other than that. So when I start to install that into people's minds and start to install that into their lives, they start to realize a difference where you're better than just ordinary. You know, and it's like, that's the part where I'm saying, and we're not doing anything other than just trying to do more, trying to, do, trying to be better. And even if it's just getting out of the bed and moving with intent, that to me is already a start so i think people kind of relate to me in that way because i am i am patient 
That's one thing I do know. I am patient. But I will work with you. And I don't – I always want to see the person do better than – like I, I'd rather see you do better with small steps than than just try to shoot yourself out of a cannon and say, "Oh yeah, I could do that," but you're not really doing it the right way, or with uh-huh. the right purpose or with the right mindset, you know. And that's just my that's just how I like to go about it. it, it build you before we really try to put you out there and like be that be that person. Build you up first. Well, so yeah. Can you tell me? Can you tell me a moment in all of this mm-hmm. that you said that you said to yourself? Shit, this might not be for me. This shit is a little too hard. All right, so that I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Um, it happens a lot. Um, just the other day, oh, not the other day, but just a couple, maybe a month ago, I was sitting here saying, "Whoa!" Now, the difference between now, I am, um, I'm really becoming an athlete in this sport more than I was before. Before, I spent a lot of time learning and training and just really realizing what how far and mental and deep I had to really put myself into this sport to understand it. So I couldn't just do it like basketball. I couldn't just go out there and start shooting jump shots and think I was going to go to a game and be good. I had to practice my craft. I had to understand what was in the coach's mind for your athlete. So, and not just be the athlete, you know, so I had to kind of study both sides and it gets to the point where if I, um, it gets overwhelming, man. I mean, the competitions and stuff like that is like there's so much pressure out of one workout. One second can knock you down 20 to 30 points. And I'm at the age right now where I'm going against kids that's 18, 19 years old, and I'm 34, going to be 35. And I'm going against these kids to the point where I'm sitting there sometimes saying I am not as fit as I thought I was. Or I might be doing too much to my body because it hurts all the time. So it's like – Am I doing the right thing? Then there's times where it's just the business side where I'm not sure if, if things are really going to work, if I'm really leading people the right way, if I'm, if I'm questioning, um, just, just how are we going to make tomorrow work sometimes? You know, it's like with the programming and with the, with everything, it gets hard. It gets, it, it gets, it's an emotional breakdown to the point where I might say, I don't know if I could do this. And, um, uh, what is, what does one do when they have those moments of self doubt? When they have those moments of pressure where you have a passion, but now it's, it's the work that goes into it. What does one do to get out of that and get, get the, the wall away from their back? All right. So I can speak on myself where, like I said before earlier, my mom installed it in me to not stop to, if you start something, you got to finish, you got to see it through. So that's one thing that I do always try to remind myself but even on days where it's too hard to even say that sometimes i say nah bump that i don't care um i have the support i have the support system of a team where they really 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 try to help me out they really try to to the point where they try to lead me in the direction of not giving up uh they believe in me i got a great support system so that's one but other than that man i really try to rely on my faith and try to stay positive and just um pray i really try to pray on it i try not to let it consume me in a negative way. Like you said, I'm, I'm a positive person, man. So I try to keep that positivity going even in my own life. And that's one thing that I know where it helps me. It's not always the answer, but it helps, even if it's a little. So uh-huh. that's, to me, that's the best thing. What is it like for you to see your students uh, excel and maybe that look on their face that they're like, wow, I really did do that? Man, that to me is everything. Um, I'm to the point where if I can help you do something that you had no idea that you were going to be able to do, it's an awesome feeling for me. Um, I take pride in that because I sit here and I try my hardest to learn about it. So if somebody comes up to me with a question about how to do this, don't worry, I got the answer. And if I don't have the answer today, I will get you the answer and we will figure this out. Uh, so believing in the impossible is something that I really, really do believe. You know, it's like just... And it, it, I try to really get that into my clients or into anybody, into my training partners. I try to get that into their mind where we can do it. You know, this is not too hard for us, you know. And that's um, what I try to do. When you first started this and I was like, you know what, I, I want to work out. So I, I called you up because you were always that guy, the athlete, no matter if you were working out or not. I always knew you were in good shape. Right. And um, so you <laughs> so I remember looking at the phone like. Like you were crazy because I was like, yeah, what can I do to start? 
you said yeah. do 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, and 10 squats. I was like, uh, okay. But you were like, but you need to do that over and over again for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you were like, count how many times you go, you know, you you uh, you do your rounds, you know? Oh. And uh, you were like, don't, you know, go at your own pace, but make sure you don't stop. You know, just make sure you finish the 20 minutes. And I'm, in my head, I'm like, come on, man, what the hell is this? Dude, in the third round, two minutes in, my ass was... <laughs> I was like, get me water, get me my bed, I'm done with this, this is crazy. And, but it gave, it gave me the... But I, it took me about, like, four tries to see to get the, the, the 20 minutes done. Right. But right. that was that was some... that was Even that, even that, and this is all just body weight, this involved right. no weights. Right. And um, when I went to visit, I hadn't seen you in years, bro. And uh, we, was, you know, we caught up. We were happy to see each other. I was like, um, I know you're a busy guy, so the the way to keep in touch with you in person would be to work out. You know, right. Right. no time to go. No time to go get something to eat. No time to, you know, it, let's just let's just work out. Mm-hmm. And I hated you. I hated you for that one hour. I still I still got the video. And I'm you a- you told me. You yeah. said, uh, do 50 push-ups. That was the first thing you said. I'm like, nope. <laughs> you're like, no, yeah. do 50 push-ups. And I'm like, no. And you're like, yeah, you will. And then after that, you're going to do 50 sit-ups. I'm like, hell no. I hate sit-ups even worse. And then I think it was jumping jacks that you had me do. I'm like, yeah, I can do those. That's fine. And then I was done. And I'm like, okay, so now we're going to sit down. We're going to talk. And you're like, okay, now do 40 push-ups. I was like, wait, what? And you're like, yeah, keep going. 40, 40, 40, 30, 30, 30, 20, 20, and, and, and so on, you know? Right. And in my head, I, I as soon as you said 50 push-ups, I'm like, no, I can't. That's it. And then this is where you came in. You're like, yeah, you can. I was like, no, I can't. I can't do 50 push-ups. I can't even, no. And to think that I finished all those rounds, and then you looked at me when I was done, and – um you're like, you want to count now? I was like, what do you, what do you mean? You're like, count how many you did. And then you were timing me. You stopped me at 1630 something, I think, 16 minutes. Okay. And you're like, you're like, go ahead and count. I was like, holy crap. I just did 150 push-ups, 150 sit-ups, okay. and 150 jumping jacks in 16 minutes. Yeah. And then, uh, you were like, you did that in 20 minutes. Don't you have an extra 20 minutes laying around all day? And you're like, you just worked out your entire body. People go to the gym for hours working on only arms, only back. And then this is when you told me, you're like, you see, this is why I love doing what I do. Because you like showing people that they can do more than they think they can do. Or more than they they think they know, but then you push them farther. And then they get that. Man, your warm-up sucked. Your warm-up was all this all calisthenics. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, we're done here. You're like, all right, that was the warm-up. Good job. Let's go. I was like, get your Richard Simmons ass out of here with this shit. Yo, you were so positive and smiling. I wanted to punch you right in the goddamn face. And, um, but yeah, dude, you showed me that day and then you had me deadlift. Yeah. And, and I, 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 it's nothing compared to other people. I mean, I deadlifted like 230, I think. But I mean, even for me at the beginning stage, it, it felt really cool. And I appreciate you for that. I never got right. to thank you right. for that workout, but that's exactly what you do. Now, um, that's awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, it was it was a great, great day. Now, tell me how you got into these competitions. Um, it was mostly because I guess when I first, first, first started, that's all the sport was. It was all about competing. It was all about doing things in a way where it was positively like pushing me in a way sports was always. So. Competing, it was something that, okay, you watch the CrossFit games, you see it. And that's what they do. So I, um, beginning stages of doing it, man, I'm going to tell you, I, I was just jumping into these workouts and doing them until my best friend Dennis came and, um, he's actually the one that helped me really build up the garage and all that stuff to where it's at now. But he's the one that's been watching me from the beginning. He's been studying me. He's, um, he's the one that actually said to me, Hey, man, you might want to kind of, slow down, uh, perfect the craft a little bit more, and then compete. And I did that. So when I started competing, I started realizing, oh, yeah, this is hitting a place in my my heart that I miss. 
And that's the competitive spirit of just being out there, giving my all, um, working hard, going against somebody else and trying to beat them. I mean, I love that feeling. So it was more just that's what the sport entails. You know, it kind of has that open that open window for you to say, hey, if you want to do this, it's here for you. But if you want to just train and be fit, it's there, to, you know, also. So the, the athlete put the athlete part of me really got wanted the competing part, you know, to happen. Tell, tell me about uh, tell me about Utah. How you you got you got the uh, acceptance into Utah, and you forgot that you even entered. Well, this, yeah, no, this is the thing about Utah. Yeah, so um, Utah, I was um, I had just got off of an injury. Um, and I, I just healed up. I started to start lift again. I started to get my numbers back to where they were, and it was a really good feeling. And everybody else, even including Dennis, was at a point where they were telling me not to rush anything to keep getting stronger because I, because of the injury. Well, of course I was just stubborn at the time and I felt like I was already ready. I signed up to a competition. It was only 20 bucks online. So it was like you record yourself doing a workout, you send it in and then, you know, you see what happens after that. It was a leaderboard. So I did it. Um, it was for six weeks, five, six weeks or something like that. I can't remember exactly. And I was in the top, I was in the top two. I, I ended up being in second place. I went, oh, that's what's up, man. That's cool. You know, I told you I was, I was getting back. And then next thing you know, they sent me an invite saying, yeah, you made it to Utah. So I was like, oh, what did that mean? <laughs> now, in the beginning of, in the beginning of this, all this competing stuff, when I was doing it before, not really thinking about it, every competition was like, uh, well, there was a few competitions like that where you would send your, your video in and then you would try to qualify for another place. Well, I never, ever had a chance. I was always in like the thousands before. Uh, and then this time I saw myself in the top five all the week. So it gave me a chance, but I didn't think it was a traveling one. So when I finally got the, um, the news that we were going to Utah, I had to break that to everybody. And pretty much I told on myself <laughs> at that point that I joined the competition after they told me not to. So that was, uh, that was interesting. So you sat there at the dinner table. You're like, so yeah. who likes Salt Lake City? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Hey, um, <laughs> You guys remember when you told me not to compete? Well, I did. Um, so, uh, yeah, and remember when you told me not to, you know, try to rush it? Well, we got to rush it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we, we gotta, we gotta rush. Hurry up. Um, and now you got this, uh, you got this competition possibly in, in February, I think you told me. Is that right? Yeah, there's gonna be, uh, well, this one is coming to Texas. It's, it, this was a master's, um, competition. So it's like through, through the age groups. Usually, like I said before, we would go, I would go against an 18 year old kid. Well, in this competition, it, the ages started at 30 and went to 34 for my division. So I am 34. So I was able to, to compete in just that division. And once again, I signed up. I'm thinking it was only an online competition, not reading everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but this one, it wasn't an online competition. They said that we actually go somewhere close to us to compete. So I'm thinking that's it. It was going to compete there and then I'll be done. I was just doing this competition. For, you know, just to keep me going with just keep my blood flowing with the competition uh, scene. Mm -hmm. I end up coming in first. And right after I finish, Dennis is looking through the website and he says, hey, uh, fool boy, this one is going to Texas. I said, no, it's not. <laughs> He's like, yes, it is, man. He's like, you did it again. You signed up to a competition that's going to take you somewhere else. And I'm like, no, I didn't. And then right as the next day had. I got an email saying, hey, you qualified for uh, Texas. Um, do you accept? And I said, yep. So I'm going to be going yeah, to Texas. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, you got to be careful when you get endorsed by Nike or Gatorade. You better read that entire contract before you oh, end up man. Like, doing so some At that point, stuff. I think I'm, def I'm definitely getting a lawyer at that point, bro. Yeah, just this, go, this, go this ahead and read this for me. Yeah, because I don't read, obviously. So. <laughs> Looks like it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, there's a really cool post and, uh, we might get a little sappy, but this is, this is, uh, this is what it is. It's, it's the support. I mean, okay. I've known you 18 years and I got, I got so much love for you and you're like a brother to me. And, and, uh, there's a really cool post on Instagram about Dennis. Tell okay. me, um, tell me about him and tell me what he means to you and, and what he's done for you in your career. Um, well, he's done everything. Um, Dennis is a big, 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 big part of all of this. And the reason why I say he's a big part, because if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be doing this. Uh, this would have been some one of them things where 
I got fit. I helped out that my boy's sister, and then it would have stopped probably. He's the one that had the vision of taking my garage where it wasn't even in use. I had a car, uh, a car sitting in it, a stove. Was that a Honda Civic, I think. No, it was a. It was actually a Mitsubishi Diamante. Oh, that was in there. That? Uh, yes, he was a '92 Mitsubishi, and this this was way past '92, bro. This when he finally <laughs> took that car out of the garage, I think it was like 2011. Okay, so, um, so when, um, so when he did that, he, um, he took the car out and he built me a a small section in my garage for me to work out in, put mats down and everything. He ended up making a pull-up bar system for me out of plumbing pipe. And I did that for a good year. And little by little, every, say some, like every month or every week, he would come into the garage and clean it out more and more and more and more to the point where now the garage is an entire fitness uh, sp- space for me to train mm-hmm. so that was the biggest thing that he did but then come to find out that he was also not only you know building that he was also watching me and studying how to make me better as an athlete and when we went to utah like i at being at home and doing all the video submissions i understood like okay i can hear him i i, I hear him telling me to go and he's pushing me the right time so i was it was a comfort place for me but when we got to Utah, he really outdone himself to the point where, I mean, bro, I was I was hearing the workouts like Charlie Brown. It would go in through one ear and out the other. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> like I couldn't I didn't understand a thing that they were telling me to do. And he would sit there and break it down to me to the point where I was like, oh, OK. Like, I mean, the little details where he would tell me, run, once you get past the line, tap your toes past the line and then run back while everybody was running around in like a half moon circle he just had me turn and those little things helped me win but that's stuff that usually i can kind of say to myself on a regular day but at that moment i couldn't even think straight and he made that possible so i gave i i had to give him so much credit when it comes down to that because he did help me in a huge way um, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he was a buddy in the crew. I, I, I mean, I was, I was, uh, real cool with him too when I, when I lived out there. Um, when you say that he, what did you say he made out of plumber pipes? Uh, pull up bar, my pull up bar system. He made plumbing. Yeah, he took the plumbing pipes. Like, he would go to Home Depot. There was plumbing pipe. He got the connecting joints for it. And I was able to do pull ups. That's how I learned how to do pull ups off of that. You know what? I'm, I'm not surprised because when we were all hanging out, mm-hmm. that guy was the, like you give him anything, and he can make a certain contraption yeah. that was yeah. used for smoking certain substances. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was definitely. He the made handy, man. that and yeah. out of anything. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, why is this guy not like an engineer or like working in the assembly line somewhere? But um, we definitely got to give him props. Shout out to Dennis. <laughs> um. What is his uh, his Instagram handle? Um, his Instagram right now is um, the real Denny one, but he also is in control of the Team Body Box page. So if you just okay. go to the Team Body Box page, that's him. Um, he is the head coach of all of us. And, you know, there's four of us right now, five of us, six of us now as athletes with him. So I think so. Uh, tell, so it's a good segue. Tell me about uh, the Body Box Garage. Uh, the Body Box Garage, yeah, it's um. Right now, it is a garage. We're one of the only garage gyms um, on this side. Um, he is the head coach of it. He's the creator of it. I am the programmer and the uh, leading athlete. But as far as um, we have me, Sal, um, Victor. Victor's another athlete. Josh is an athlete. Um, we also have Karen as an athlete. Um now, we also have these other two guys that are uh, joining the team. They also go to other gyms, but they are a part of the team, especially when we go to Utah, Brandon and John and George. Okay. So, yeah, so there's uh, big names that you you can also see on the Instagram page. Um, check them out. They are awesome athletes, man, every single one of them. Awesome athletes, especially uh, Karen. She just started CrossFit this year, and she is already a little beast, bro. I mean, I went to a competition with her for her first competition, uh, we played sixth place as a team. And I mean, she pushed me. Like, you know, she has it. She has what we call the it factor. Like, she mm-hmm. wants to win. She wants to compete. So she's awesome, man. Check her out. But yeah. Um, 
we you, you were talking about the competitiveness and how it uh it brought you back to your sports days. One yeah. thing I did notice though in your Instagram when you did go to Utah, there was just so much support, so much love, so much positivity. Tell me how important that is when you're trying to when you're down on your knees and you're trying to do that last push up or that last rep and you're sweating and you're just hurting and you got people screaming in your ear that you can do it. It's awesome. I mean, that feeling alone, it's the best feeling, especially when you look in the crowd and I mean, everyone is sitting there telling you to get up, to keep moving. And you have no idea who these people are. Uh That is a warm feeling. Like you're not out there alone. Like you can tell they understand and they know and they feel the pain that you're feeling, but they just want you to succeed. Like, it's not like anybody's looking at you to fail. And when you have that behind you, you're going to do nothing but push harder. So, I mean, I I love it. And, and that made me love competing even more is the fact that the, the people that they're watching are so in tune with it more than any of the sport that I've ever been in, tell you the truth. So um, that's awesome, man. What, uh, what has CrossFit done for you in your life outside of CrossFit? with your family, with your friends, with relationships, with the way you are to people? It's taught me about accountability. It's taught me um, about being vulnerable and being okay with it. Um, It's also put me in a place where I understand my strength and understand that that there are things that are not too far for me to accomplish. Like, they're not outside my reach. As long as I work hard at it, uh, put my all my mind and effort into it i can do it uh no matter what man crossfit has taught me that um to believe in my ability if i don't know exactly what that ability is find out uh don't be scared to take it take chances you know now that uh now that the audience know what crossfit did for you what do you want Reef's legacy to be in the CrossFit world and what kind of mark do you want to do? What what do you want to bring to CrossFit that people are going to see and maybe take with them into their lives? I'm going to tell you right now, bro, I think I found something where I'm going to be able to do this for the rest of my life. Um, I think I'm going to be able to do CrossFit till I can't do anything else. And I want people to understand that it is a part of me to be an athlete. It's a part of me to be this person that wants to push and wants to be the greatest person that I can be but at the same time I'm um, in a place where I'm happy you know and this is what makes me happy and to see other people go through the same type of thing as me and get happiness out of it is just I know I want to be around that more so I support the community I support everybody that's in the struggle but not giving up um, and as far as my legacy goes, man, just a person that is full of love and wants to give it and also wants to show that I am here with a purpose outside of myself and I'm not scared to attack it, mm. you know? Dope. Um, let me, uh, just wipe my tears away for a second. Let everybody know where they can find you on the social media, um, well, I, you can find me. So my my name Reef Warfield, uh, all one R E E F W A R F I L D. Um, that's my fitness page. You can also find me through Team Body Box. Um, hit up my coach Dennis. You can always get to me through there. But right now, man, look out for Wad Weeklies. I'm on that. I'm going to be at the Southwest Championship in Utah. And I will be at the Masters of Masters competition in Texas. Uh, that will be in February, and Utah is in May, the beginning of May 1st. So February 8th, Texas, Utah, May 1st. Um, I, I keep forgetting, man, you got a cool-ass last name, Warfield. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just fits your personality. You go in there, you're ready to fight, you're ready to take it on. And then uh, we had this conversation the other day, like you were doing basketball, football, bowling. Um, <clears throat> for those that may not know, you were you were there with me. I was doing the acting. I was right. doing. We we did radio. I did stand up comedy. Um, and it's just like we fell into our, our careers right now. We fell into it, you know. And yeah. we 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 found the love in it. And um, it's for somebody as arrogant as I am. It's mm-hmm. funny that I I enjoy doing this where it's not about me. It's about whoever I have on 
as a guest, try to show support and uh, sell whatever product they got, you know. And um, it's really cool. I've known you forever, and I, I wish you so much luck. I, I got so much love for you. I I congratulate you on all your success, and uh, you deserve every little bit of it, bro. You do. Um, you, shout out! Shout out to Body Box Garage. Shout out to your moms. I love that lady. Shout out to Dennis, uh, the whole crew. Uh, this is D with DNC Radio. Make sure you catch Reef Warfield uh, on Instagram. Team, uh, it was Team Body Box, right on the Instagram. Yeah. Yep. Team Body yep. Box, Reef Warfield, Reef's Life is also your. Uh, yeah, that's like my. Some, some, yeah, that's, that's like, your that's personal my, uh, one, but you, you know, you put you put some uh, some inspirational stuff up there too. Yeah, that's like my um, little mind, my little release, my mind posts. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, DNC Radio episode two is in the, in uh, in the books. I appreciate you guys listening. Make sure you guys follow Reef. Make sure you guys follow Body Box Garage. Um, for any CrossFitters out there, uh, this is one of your people, and uh, I'm glad I got to look into your world, and I'm glad I learned a little bit more. I I, uh, I was in your world for all about an hour, and it killed me, and I don't know how you guys do it as a career. So I wish yeah. everybody luck in the CrossFit world. Reef, I wish you luck. Um, Thanks, brother. Make sure you guys uh, follow me. Follow me on DNC Digital on Instagram, DNC Digital on Twitter. Uh, make sure you guys like comment and subscribe to dnc digital this is dnc radio thank you guys so much for listening and i am out